The end of the year is a time when people take stock of their year, their ambitions, their dreams, their accomplishments, their challenges, and more. And it's time that we could put all of the sadness, disappointment, or we can uh, pull towards what we want next. And this is all about how we look at perspective. My guest today, Eric Zander, has just finished preparing the Zodiac details for the year 2024. And in Chinese folklore, it's the year of the green dragon, a time for yang energy to rise, for new birth and strength to shine. So what are we gonna do with this Zodiac? I wanna give you a little bit of background about Eric before we dive into chatting. Um, and I'm, it's a little bit on the longer side, but I think you're gonna find this very interesting. So Eric Zander is a multifaceted professional, my goodness, renowned internationally as a teacher, astrologer, healer, and innovator. He's the CEO of a company called Omega Alpha, and he oversees subsidiaries operating projects in wellness and technology industries. In addition to his role, um, he also holds Apple certifications Logic Pro, internal training at Apple, etc. So now you can see he's not just going to be in one genre, he's in several. Mm -hmm. As the master blender at Aurelia Essential Oils, he contributes significantly to the company's leadership in healing essential oil blends. He also co-modernized the tarot archetypes into the Cosmic Pixel lines and launched the transformative Zodiac Hacks platform, focused on demystifying astrological archetypes for self-enhancement. So now you can see how his technical background combined with his love for wellness and um, the brain is all coming together. So now he has a book called Zodiac Hacks, Constellations, a month by month guide to making the most of your year, uh, of your year every year. It offers insights into quality of time and interpersonal relationships, explaining astrology in a practical manner. And through this full-time consulting practice, Eric offers individual reading sessions, energy balancing, international retreats, and in-depth one-on-one transformation programs. So now let's look a little bit at where we're going to go. As a developer of astrology, which combines astrology with the energy structures of humans, including astrology uh, yoga, he has produced the vessel building app for daily exercise. This really interests me from a from my Tai Chi background. And his current mm. projects aim to integrate timeless wisdom into the modern era. His daily writings and the podcast Ageless are highly sought after in the wellness community, reflecting his diverse expertise and influence in various fields. Okay, be sure you've got your pen and paper ready to learn more from Eric and to consider what your next year could look like if you looked forward and you considered where you could be empowered. You're listening to Michelle Greenwell, sponsored by Dance Debut Inc. and the Cape Breton Tea Company. Please welcome Eric. Wow, thank you. <laughs> this is a nice introduction. I was like, wow, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true? And as we get older and the list gets a little bit longer, you wonder, how did I have all the time for that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I if I knew how to duplicate myself, I, I would. <laughs> so I could do more. <laughs> but, but that's interesting that you mentioned that about the time aspect, because basically, there are different ways to measure time. You know, the sun rises, the sun sets, our whole experience is based on how we are experiencing time. And there are different ways, different cultures have calculated and measured time throughout the ages in like so many different ways. That's why there's so many different calendars. So I think it's so interesting when you bring up the, the Chinese zodiac, um, because I use Western zodiac, but there is correlations and it's just different calculations of time. So yeah, it's it's all about time and the interpretation of time. And I love to focus on the quality of time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I've noticed also like when you when you have a higher quality of time, the quantity becomes well, yes, relative, but it stretches a little yes. bit. Yeah. I agree with you. When you're sitting in that perfect spot where you're in great joy of whatever it is you're working on time is gone. 
it Beautiful. disappears. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So before you and I dive in deeper, cause I know that's yeah, yeah. really mm -hmm. quick here. Um, mm -hmm. let's pull one of the cards from the affirmations for the body and biofield deck. So for those mm, nice. people listening, who've heard the podcast before, you know that I'm going to pull from my deck. And uh, for those that have not heard before, I'm just going to hold up the front cover. And it's just to show you the front has a ribbon of color on it, which is called mother and child. So this is uh, as we nurture ourselves, as we nurture others, how we can bring change forward. Um, so for those people interested, you can go to dancedebut.com into the shop and you just have to do a little digging down in the shop to find the full deck but it'll be there. So I say that because I had a friend looking the other day. Okay, so Beautiful. let's look at the card that I pulled. Wow. For those people uh, on the podcast that can't see the vision, there's uh, two ribbons of green that kind of go down the center, um, almost like an hourglass, actually. And um, in between that are circles of blue with black, and they actually end up making two hearts, one facing up, one facing down. And then some kind of a diamondy kind of figure in the middle. And we've got some purple and blue on the outside edges in bands of color. So this is for thoracic four, which is not quite between the shoulder blades, just a little bit higher than that. And sometimes when we're engaged in a lot of activities, we will hunch over and stretch that space. So sitting up and bringing it back into balance can be really important. This is where there is duality to living. The obvious may be too easy and the less obvious may be the richness. So expand your duality through breath and reflection. And it's the note of F. So F for some people that would be related to heart chakra, um, but it's actually the bone here is vibrating at the note of F. Okay. Wow, that's really beautiful. Yeah, um, the artwork is done by Tanya Levy, a colleague of mine um, mm -hmm. and partner on this project. Um, so it's all pictures of nature that have been run mm -hmm. through filters. So there's many layers to each of the pictures. It's yeah. very interesting because I immediately saw the, the two hearts mm -hmm. in that. And, and I, I, love, I love cards. And when I was uh, modernizing the, the tarot, it was very interesting because you know, you have the, the, the playing cards and you have, uh, in the tarot, you have the cups, which they were, they became like the, um, I believe it was the, the heart. Yeah, it was the hearts. They became the hearts in the playing decks, you know, like the hearts, the spades, oh, yeah. so the hearts are connected to the cups because it had to do with the water. And there's a tarot card, the two of hearts or the two of cups. And uh, it's it's about that that reciprocation, and I think it's very interesting how the position of where that card is, because it's about the healing. You have the caduceus in there, like the mm -hmm. the healing between two hearts. It, for me, what I felt when I looked at that is the the front of the heart chakra and the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. And how you have to keep both open. I, I remember many years ago when I was doing a heart meditation, all of a sudden, because I, I had quite an interesting upbringing, but uh, I was working on my heart chakra. And then one day I felt the back of the heart chakra open and I was like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> all this stuff. So it's like one heart, but these two different sides. So this card, I mean, it was really... It, it's right when you right when you showed it on the screen there I, I i felt it so thank you for that yeah that's really interesting because i i hadn't seen i mean i've looked at this card many times for different reasons um in different projects um but you're right with uh you know yes if i go up and down you have this flow almost of a figure but when you go sideways you can see the the opening of those chakras yeah very really powerful yeah. And the, wow. the bands on the outside edge, they're not quite figure eights, um, but they could be. So um, it's a pretty interesting right. little pattern. So I mean, yeah. if, I mean, if we're really funny here, because like, I, I saw the whole thing as almost like a laminous gate, mm -hmm. you know, with like the infinity symbol, the figure eight. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, 
one heart, right? We're all one heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's start there then. We're just <laughs> all one <laughs> nice big conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I can hardly really wait to see where we take this. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look then. Um, I always like to check in with what kind of uh, beverage that you've prepared for the day and for the conversation. What have you got today? So I have a very nice uh, cup of uh, peppermint tea mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, peppermint from Oregon. Actually, I, I'm very I'm very picky with uh, my because you would say this would be like again the essential oil world. You would say this is a single note. This is just a a pure leaf of a plant. But different plants give different uh, qualities, even if it's or different locations because they even have different botanical names so i like my peppermint to be sharp not so sweet mm -hmm. it kind of like you know it's perfect for the podcast and what i'm doing and i have it in a in a cosmic pixels mug which is actually merch from our um our tarot deck so we actually make these mugs and it says here happiness joy and lasting success are in your cup and then oh, you have on there that well, this is actually one of the tarot cards that we that we co-modernized. This is the Ten of Cups. Interesting, we were just talking about the cups. Yeah. And so it it, it charges the obviously the water, like the the contents. And so you would say I'm drinking peppermint tea, but I'm also drinking happiness, joy, and lasting success. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And I, mm -hmm. I'm also. I had never actually really thought about where some of those ingredients come from. People often ask me, where did you get the different ingredients for this tea? And they do come from all over the place, depending on what you're looking for. But I hadn't yeah. considered something as simple as peppermint, which does grow all over for, for, uh, for me in North America. So yeah. Um, yeah. What is the quality of it? And oh yeah. 100% because the the essential oil company like Aurelia essential oils like that is my passion and finding like we have lots of relationships with different farmers and different farms and how is it being grown and what's the you know the political situation the meteorological situation what's going on there all these things also go into consideration so yeah it's it's really really it's important yeah, yeah. okay so now that we've we've already dove in this way how do people get a hold of that mug? This, oh, so this is, they can find this mug, uh, well, on cosmicpixels.com. I believe we have the store there. We're kind of changing platforms. So if, it, if it's not easily accessible, just find me on social and send me a message and I'll, <laughs> I'll take care of you because we're, we're changing platforms. We're kind of consolidating everything. And this is kind of like moving a, I would say more than moving a house, it's like moving a whole company, like a whole business. So there's a lot going on there with that. And this is part of the 2024 uh, changes, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, so yeah, either just contact me or you can go to cosmicpixels.com and try it there. Okay. And we'll just ship it out to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I have Liberty Wine. Uh, in my mm. teacup today and that's from the fire element from five elements in Chinese medicine so I was looking at um, fire and passion and what that transformation could be like if we're really involved in it so that's the kind of tea I was looking for so there's several ingredients inside of it um, but I have my Prince Edward mm. Island mug beautiful so it has um, it has dirt that comes from the island embedded into the paint. Wow. And so I enjoy um, picking this up and just holding it. And PEI soil is a red soil. And so in Canada, that's a very unique piece. In Nova Scotia, we also have red soil. Um, so I don't have a Nova Scotia one, but I can hold PEI. <laughs> Wow, I can I, I can feel it just looking at it. Like mm -hmm. you 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 want to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Want to nurture it. <laughs> exactly. Let exactly. it nurture you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So cheers. Thanks. Cheers. For, for cheers. So much fun just with teacups. Here we go. Beautiful. 
Oh, it's lovely to have a conversation too about ingredients and the power of them. Um, Cause a lot of times people just put something into the cup and they just drink, you know, and it's really right. nice to be really purposeful with what it is. Right. Oh, 100%. I mean, we have over, like I can just speak not for tea, but for essential oil blends, we have over a hundred different blends and each blend has a story. It was created for a client or someone who had a particular condition. And then uh, the, the blend was created for that person. And then finding like some blends can have up to like 10 ingredients and so finding the right ingredients season after season, because, you know, the earth changes and things shift. And also, like I said, there could be certain political situations going on and stuff like that in different areas of the world. So it really makes it makes all the difference, because then also when you're blending it, because, you know, I'm the master blender, you can feel the difference between the raw materials of certain qualities of plants or you know stuff like that so it's very very it helps with creating like the product that's going to bring the most healing to whatever the the goal is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow Mm -hmm. awesome okay that sounds like another podcast so okay (laughs) we'll we'll put that one aside for now okay so let's dive into how you got into this work um do you want to explain a little bit yeah the the astrology part yeah (laughs) Yeah, so it it I guess you would say it found me. Um since I was very young, I I was just, you know, running around the house just into superheroes and <clears throat> kind of just playing like kids do and I would just stumble upon my mom had these big kind of esoteric books on astrology like coffee table books and stuff like that. That, that went deeper than horoscopes, not just like what's in the newspaper, but what's the ruling planet of a sign and what's how does it work internally? Not that I knew what it meant as a child, but there were these beautiful medieval drawings that I was just really attracted to of the stars and the planets. And, and um, so this kind of just awakened me a little bit. And then of course, um, getting into anime and manga and just seeing how, how a lot of this wisdom is embedded in the Japanese culture as well. So this was very interesting for me to see it like on a practical level. And uh, even though it was like imaginative, but you could see how people were talking about it, like in these stories. And so then um, when I figured out how to get on the internet <laughs> growing up when I was little, then I would just start I mean, it wasn't Google, but it was other search engines. And I would start looking things up and going deeper. And I just taught myself. Um, And then when I got older, then I would seek out teachers and guides and I would go deeper with it. And then when I had my medical emergency, I started asking questions. Why did this happen? Um, could I have prevented it? What am I supposed to do with it? I was I was set on one track of life, but then that happened, then it set me onto another one. And then I started to learn about healing, energy healing, not so much the Western way, but more the, I guess you would say the alternative, or that's what it's known as. And then I started to see how it comes together. I, I was like at the intersection of why I've studied all this and I practice it all the time. And astrology is something I still learn every day. It's like, mm-hmm. it's such a huge, and there's different schools of astrology as well. And then I started to see how it intersected. And then my passion really, like that fire you were talking about, it really like just, it's just ignited and burned. And so then I, was able to then kind of develop this system called astrology that is explaining how then the astrological archetypes are manifesting through the body, essentially how we are interfacing the cosmos and everyday life back and forth. So that's kind of a nutshell version of how it started and then where the passion kicked in and then what I started doing with it. It's really interesting when you said too, you know, you you were going on one path with the information, 
And then it led you on a different path. So it revealed all these other pieces because I think sometimes people end up on that. They want to stay on the path. <laughs> and yeah. the path is easy if, if the habits are all there. But that might not be where you get your greatest understandings and knowledge from. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I was studying a lot of things that existed and it started and I was, this was great for me. And it was just kind of fun to kind of also understand people in my life better and to better communicate and also understand myself. But then integrating and 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 I did see and feel energies when, when I was also when I was younger. So I would kind of color different auras and I would color things based on the charts and stuff like that. But it really wasn't until I had to heal myself or recover, let's put it that way, because like I had to heal from that incident that then I was able then to apply what I studied into then what I was learning again. Like, mm -hmm. that was interesting. But, but then what I was learning through my healing and that was me as a patient and as a student, as a client of these amazing healers and teachers. And then uh, I, and in terms of certain kinds of modalities, uh, I, one day I, I saw one of my friends, you know, she was doing like this thing. And I was like, what is that? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your fingers? Like, what is this? And, and she explained to me, it's like this test. And then that took me like, in, like to a whole nother level of things as well so, so you were just for the people on the podcast you were using the finger uh muscle monitoring uh, yes so just so people know what you did and uh and then being able to access body information from that knowledge yeah but it was also yeah it, it was it was it was in that particular case though it was about is this decision in the highest good mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and, and then it was like, okay, is this orange good or, you know, all these things. So it was like, I need to know. And then I was able then to plug that into the astrology because what's really interesting is that that whole system of that monitoring, that biofeedback monitoring is there's more than one way to interpret that software. Like I call it software because it's all based on the physical hardware, which we have these different muscles, and then we have the energy, kind of, you would say the 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 interface of the energy and the physical, like with the different pathways and the different chakras or the vortices. And there's different ways to interpret them. A lot of it through the TCM, but you can also understand it through the archetypes of astrology. And that's, that's what I that's what was like sending off all these light bulbs on me like well there's 12 signs and there's 12 major meridians and you know then you have the planets and you have the chakras and so i was able to then really see how it all comes together and and develop this system where then people who did know a lot about astrology or knew nothing or they wanted to learn about healing or says well you know for example pisces rules over the feet or sagittarius rules over the the hips and thighs or leo the heart and so forth and so forth and you can see it in the chart and you can see like, what are some predispositions and wow. what are things that we can transcend? Because that's, that's the biggest thing that I'm, that I do is, okay. Yeah. So we have our charts and we have astrology, but how do we get over it? <laughs> <laughs> that's the point not yeah. to box in, but to unbox it. Yeah. Wow. I never even thought about that capacity. That's really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you dabbled in how you went into that work. Do you want to talk a little bit about how it's now empowered you? Yeah. So before I was doing it professionally, um, because that's empowered me in way in a lot of different ways. But I just, if I just talk personally, like before that, uh, it, it really helped me to understand myself, <laughs> you know, 
it really helped me to understand the the cert, the ways that I was perceiving things, but then also my potential so that I, I could really get clear on what is it that I want to do? Um, maybe where where could I where am I a little bit weaker in a certain area of my life? And then how can I work on that? And so it, it definitely empowered me with that. And then it empowered me with kind of being prepared for what's coming. And also in a way to kind of validate and confirm what it is that I'm going through. Wow. And this was, oh, this always felt really good to kind of, okay, so this is what's going on. And then to know that I can change it because um, in Zodiac Hacks, in the Zodiac Hacks system, you have fate, which is just happens every day if you don't do anything. And you can choose, though, do you want to be subjected to fate or do you want to transcend it? And then you have destiny, which is then what you create, you know, what you want, your goals, your your wishes, your dreams, your hopes. That's your destiny. And then you have to kind of transcend fate to get on that, to achieve, like to like reach the destiny. So it, it always felt really empowering for me to to have the confirmation the heads up and also the understanding of myself like why am i sensitive or why is this triggering me more or also because i'm you know astrology only works also if you accept past lives so it's like what did i do in this past life that i what's my baggage that i brought over that i have to work on and and uh was also very good for relationships too. <laughs> yeah, it was very good. When I when I met, it was funny because when I first met my wife, I was like, okay, birth time, location, place, everything, let's have a look. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Not that it can't be, you know, it's like, that's the other thing too. You can have what's called good astrology and you can still mess it up because you have free will. <laughs> yeah oh it's been very empowering (laughs) okay so let's uh talk a little bit about the clients that you work with and Mm -hmm. then how um they can respond to the information um i guess a little bit differently than just the way that you are able to frame it can you share a little bit about that yeah so i have two different types of when i'm working with people one-on-one i have of the healings where I do astrology, where then I, you're on the table, or I do um, like a remote balancing, and we work with the chart and the goals, and we just there. It's just like a, a healing, and I have examples of this on online, social media, YouTube, and this is this is great. And then I also have uh, readings where then we will look into the chart, look into what's coming up look at what the goals are and kind of make a game plan of what to do based on the goals, or maybe you don't have any goals or you just, you know, you just want to do some self-discovery and then that can be for business relationships, the self, anything like that. And then I have these group classes that I do every month where we do new moon, full moon, virtual rituals online and then we do a sun meditation every month as well and this is where we can set intentions remove obstacles so like on the new moon you set intentions and i developed this um, this protocol that works with your chart your particular chart and the energy of the moon which is different every month and you set intentions for that and then on the full moon you can remove obstacles that have come up And then with the solar meditations, like the sun meditations, you get that light and you do like a huge healing. And so this is, these are like the group classes that I'm doing as well. And then I opened a Zodiac Hacks school online, which you can go to and study and learn about basically all kinds of different components of astrology. And these are all recorded and uploaded so that people can learn 
on their own pace because it can be a lot of information. The way I wanted to present it was as a journey. So it's not just like a class, but like it's an actual sequential journey that is transforming you as you are learning, which is was how it was for me. Mm-hmm. 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 Wow. So I can see when you said you're moving house to put it all under one platform, I can see how much yeah. migration has to happen then. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. So that, that takes people through that journey of sometimes people just want to have their cards read yeah. and then, and then, then they don't know what to do with that information. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you're saying is you, you've created a whole journey for them. So you could start with, I'd like to know a little bit more. And then it yeah. really becomes a self-empowering way of learning about life and about how these skills can all come together. Yeah, absolutely. And then we make a plan of attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, okay, so you've been working on what does 2024 mean? Were there any surprises when you got started? Well, the the beautiful thing is about astrology is that unless something knocks a planet off orbit, a transit, when a transit's going to happen, it's going to happen. So I knew what was kind of planned. So there weren't any surprises in the sense like, hey, oh my gosh, like, where are you coming from? (laughs) But uh, there are something very huge is happening next year is that the planet Pluto, which is the smallest tiny, I call it the tiniest, but the mightiest planet, the edge of the solar system Uh, in astrology, it's a planet. Okay. And it's moving into a new sign and it doesn't happen very often. So you have to imagine it takes about Pluto about 240 years to go all the way around the zodiac so in the course of one human lifetime no one will experience that right Mm -hmm. so this is a huge shift that that pluto is what's called a generational planet so it affects the whole collective on like for generations when it moves into a new sign it's gigantic So that's happening really, it takes Pluto about two years to move into a new sign. And we've been experiencing that in 2024, it's going to move in there and it's done. Like it's like really, you know, like moving a site, moving a house. There's like, if 10 things can go wrong in life, when you move, it's like a hundred things can go wrong, you know, (laughs) and it takes more time than normal. And so Pluto moving into a new section is it takes a lot of time, but it's going to finalize in 2024. So that's a bit of a surprise in that what we've been experiencing for the past year and a half has been a little bit of a peek into what this is going to be. And so Pluto is that planet that's about unveiling the hidden. And it's moving into a sign Aquarius, which is all about technology, innovation, humanity. So what we've seen so much with AI and uh, technology and all the space, um, I kept seeing like space junk, you know, like space pollution, like in orbit. And, you know, we're, we see a lot of this going on and Pluto moving into the sign, it's going to be a whole reboot for the collective. So, so thinking like about shedding the old, but then also making room for the new. And there's no way to predict what that will look like, just that it will happen. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Amazing. So then mm-hmm. if you think 240 years, so we're, we're back about four generations. That's right. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. For who got to see that before. That's also yeah. interesting. So you can think of your ancestors and, you know, what they went through then. And it's very interesting yeah. times that we're in. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And from there, what can people expect in 2024? So I, I wrote a, a 2024 forecast. It's about 10,000 words. It's, it's on zodiacax.com. And there I, I broke down all the major transits that are going on. But also, like that's like a general forecast. But also I wrote what's and they're releasing now in stages, but is different horoscopes for each sign. So like a general overview of what each sign can expect, because you have four different elements, you know, fire, um, air, water, earth, in terms of the Western Zodiac. So you have like Aries, Leo, Sagittarius is fire. And then you have Gemini, Libra and Aquarius are air. And then you have Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces are water. And then there's uh, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn are earth. So the different families of elements, they're going to feel different things or experience different things. So the, the water signs are more into feeling, <laughs> the, the earth signs are more into sensing, the, the air signs are more into like mentalizing, and then the fire signs, like they're more intuiting what's going on. So they're having these different experiences, but we can expect as a collective like a lot of transformative changes in technology because of that Pluto aspect, but also um, there's going to be more psychological growth, um, more spiritual evolution where it's like we're, we're kind of grounding what we have experienced, what we have learned, and then making something useful out of it. So that's very important because there's going to be also this push for expansion, this push for communicating on new levels and understanding what is the purpose of, of a relationship. I think one thing that we've learned over the past couple of years is how important relationships are. And in 2024, we will kind of think about well, am I really, like we said in the beginning of the podcast, am I really present here with this? Is my is my heart open on both sides, mm -hmm. right? Am I bringing in old relationships into my new relationship? Am I pushing people away that I shouldn't? Am I bringing people in that I shouldn't or vice versa? So there's this huge emphasis. And the reason I say that for anyone who maybe knows a little bit, but Jupiter is moving into Gemini. And Gemini is a lot about relationships and frameworks and commitments. So it, we're having this, this huge Jupiter's the heart. Okay. It's also the heart chakra. It's, and that's why I think it's perfect that, you know, you, you pulled that card <laughs> is, you know, is my heart open in the face of, you know, rejection or is it is it open in the face of fear so what what we can expect is a lot of strength if you if you take the the numbers of the year you get an eight okay so an eight is that figure eight that lamnus gate energy and this is connected to strength in the tarot and strength is about strength obviously but also the endurance the the transformation of our patterns on an individual level and it can really allow us to be proactive with the things that we need to change and opening the heart and keeping it open i mean if 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 a certain amount of people can do that it will completely change the world for the better Wow. Um, it's interesting because most people would be thinking about what is my reading? <laughs> you know, yeah. what's what's in it for me? Um, yeah. But but what you're saying about that's on the site. <laughs> it, it is on there. But but I'm just thinking about not not so much that as what it means for you to be present so that you're present with all the other people who can make the connection, who can change the world. Yeah, that's that's really empowering when we're facing a lot of challenges in the world where we feel like we're powerless. Totally. And, and to realize that if, 
if we take time within ourselves, we can make that connection to the collective and we can, we can be there supporting. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Cause it ripples out. If you just start with the people around you. Yeah. Gemini, like I said, Jupiter moving into Gemini, Gemini rules everything that's around you, everything that's at hand. So it's just anyone that you can touch around you. And, and it's, it can be very difficult, you know, with the people who are close to you at times to, to offer that generosity that's that we easily, or I mean, many of us kind of, it's, it's sometimes easier to be more like generous with strangers or just kind of it's, but it's the people who are close to us at times it can, it's very easy to snap and just get impatient or, you know, expect certain things. So all of the challenges of 2024, they're in that forecast. Now, here's the amazing thing. Every year, what I do is I guide everybody through a 12 day new year meditation. Mm -hmm. And it begins on the 1st of January. And and it goes for the first 12 days of January because the 2024 is the beginning of the Gregorian year. Okay. And the Gregorian year is what the entire world uses for flights, banks. You know, we use it to meet. Uh, even if we abide by like a lunar calendar, like uh, di there's different calendars. We don't typically, we don't reference those dates. We reference the Gregorian dates. Okay, so it's the beginning of that year. And there's power to it, because there's a lot of people who are thinking about that. And, you know, as the year ends, like you said, and then it begins. So the first 12 days of January, you can program the 12 months that correspond to those 12 days. So those those 12 days are like the source code of those 12 months. So January 1st is January. Uh, January 6th would be June and January 12th would be December, like just to shorthand mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I prepare like a consciousness, different affirmations that you can kind of hack those transits that are occurring for each month at the beginning. And then you can redesign or design the year how you want it. So it's very powerful for intentions and you, and you, you come every day, the first 12 days, like 10 minutes. Um, and then you, you know, you do the guided meditation and then there's a workbook. And so I've been doing this for years and it's been helping a lot of people to kind of control time. <laughs> that's basically what it's about. So that they can program, uh, getting out of autopilot, getting out of the, uh, like the, the robotic thinking, because there's so many things distracting us from the inner work, the transformation that we need to do, that it helps you to hack out of like the, the robotic consciousness that tends to take over. And it, and, and it has shown that people can keep their new year's resolutions when they're doing this 12 day uh, program. So it's, I, I, you know, it's, it's not just, I lay everything out, but it's like, okay, here are things that you can do. And then if you want to do like a, like a program, then that's also available as well. Wow. And so interesting too, when you said then, then the, um, the resolutions are there, but you, you really have brought your resolution because resolutions always, you know, peter out about six weeks in, if we're lucky. Yeah, that's right. Um, but mm -hmm. you've already brought them through 12 months of possibility. So that forward motion is already in place for people to see and realize um, yeah. what some of those dreams look like. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I'm. There has to be a way for tea to be involved in there. <laughs> I'm yeah. Sure you got your oils in there. Um, I'm like, wow. What would my twelve teas of January be? So absolutely, absolutely. So I, I don't. I'm not familiar with the the product line, but you would you would because there's a there's a chart for every month, and then there's a consciousness for every month, and then you can see which tea would help with that, mm -hmm. or you can just test it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're referring to uh, using the muscle monitoring again for those Yeah, I mean, you listening. can, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you can just say, okay, this is the consciousness for that month. So what could I, what could I, you know, yeah. tea what, would be good for that. Pull up for that. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, okay. So for 
those people who are listening and this is all new for them, um, can you, first of all, let's get them to where they can find your, uh, your 10,000 words and yeah. uh, introduction to how they could be a part of your 12 day calendar. How can yeah. they find you there? So the, the forecast is on zodiachacks.com and it's under forecasts. <clears throat> and then the, the horoscopes, they are being released. Yeah, you know, they'll be, they should be up by the beginning of December. And also you can sign up for the 12 day meditation also on zodiacax.com. Okay. And so it, it, it's all there. And it was really interesting because when we were publishing the, the 10,000 word forecast, I didn't want to make an ebook out of it. I didn't want to publish it on Kindle. I, you know, I didn't want to also just paste it into, uh, you know, like a, a web page kind of format because, you know, you can get exhausted just scrolling through 10,000 words, you know? And so I wanted to, you know, as, as you know, cause I'm, I'm, you know, I know how to do these things, but, but I, with my computer background, but I, I wanted to create a way that would be easy for people to kind of naturally bookmark and keep their progress organized because you can't just sit down and read the whole thing. I mean, you could, but so anyhow, we designed it in a way that you can open and close certain sections on the site and you can read about the different transits that are going on because I talk basically about all the planets in the solar system, what they're doing. And then also something very important is the retrograde dates when the planets from our perspective are going backwards and they're kind of turning everything upside down. And so that's all in there as well as eclipse season, which is huge for transformation. I'm very big on transformation. It's something I had to do in my life, like constantly and something I'm constantly doing. So everything is always geared towards transformation for the better and, and, and being proactive about it. So I, I very much you know, I'm happy about the way that we organized how it's laid out on the site. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. So if people are thinking about how they're going to approach 2024, you yeah. have now a lot of interesting ways to think about how you can be setting up that transition for yourself. And mm -hmm. as this podcast will come out um, uh, in December, so before people are making their plans for 2024 i'm going to invite people to think about with the power that's coming with this year what is it you really do want and start to um it, you might be able to articulate it in words but it might be more in a vision or a movie um some way that you can encapsulate some of the senses so you can start to really feel some of that and then take advantage of Eric's work and his opportunities for you to really advance that. And it would just be so lovely at the end of 2024 for people to be able to report back how engaging this year in a different way, they were able to do that transformation process. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Okay. So we've got, um, some of the ways that people can contact you. Let's, um, is there anything else that you want to talk about that I might not have asked you about? <clears throat> no, I think, I think, I think I'm good. I mean, maybe it would be interesting to just mention that like with the different uh, systems of time, like if we're talking from the Chinese uh, astrological system, um, that will kick in because I did study Tibetan astrology and which is like a offshoot, of, but it's all the same archetypes as well. Um, that kicks in during the new moon of Aquarius and that's in February. So it doesn't happen on January 1st. Like the, 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 every year is ruled by a different planet, which is actually determined. I'm not a different planet, a different animal, mm -hmm. which is actually determined by the position position of Jupiter in Western astrology, but that's you know for another time. And it's very interesting because just to say a few words on that, 
um, in the Chinese astrology, like I think, as you said, it's the year of the dragon. Okay. And every year is also a different animal. And these animals were selected by the Buddha, like who were visiting him as he was sitting under the boot. Well, I guess you would say Siddhartha as he was sitting underneath the Bodhi tree becoming the Buddha and the animals were coming and he was giving them blessings and the dragon came and every year is a different animal, but then you have a different chi of that animal and and 2024 in that new at that new moon of aquarius we kick into the wood dragon okay and i just want to say that the wood dragon is really powerful first of all for trees so be kind to trees wood years are the cycles of growth also where we kind of go from being green to like strong and blooming and like you know like we're, we're we're it's like this process of going from being green to gold like wood mm -hmm. so it's this trees have the ability to defy gravity so i just want to say because you have these different layers of of archetypes going on we have also this ability to defy gravity the heaviness that we feel some of us feel, but it, I mean, I'm pretty sure we all feel it, but there's a lot of heaviness going on. The trees can help us to ascend and connect to that tree of life and where we can experience ultimate fulfillment. So I just, I had to squeeze that in. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's lovely. Um, you know, one of the one of my students in Tai Chi actually, we play. Mm -hmm. I have a, a machine that you can hook up to the plants and you can take the frequency from the plants, run wow. it through a synthesizer, and, and you can get the music from the plants. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's um, it's called Music of the Plants, is, is the machine. And you have to send me more information on that. Sorry, that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. um, that one actually on my link tree. So it's a uh, link tree dance debut. Mm -hmm. I have a link that goes directly to that machine. So a tree. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what one of my students was saying um, in the last couple of weeks has come up a couple of times is yes, we can hook it up to plants and we can have that in the room to do Tai Chi. But one of the most profound times for her was when we were outside doing Tai Chi and hooked it up to the trees. And the wind was blowing and the tree just kept singing. And she said that for her, that was the most profound time. So absolutely. Um, wow. Yeah. So I'm just in my mind now thinking about as if we go into the spring and we go into the world um, Tai Chi and Qigong Day, which is at the end of April. Um, I'm just bringing up those ideas of what's possible with the trees as people start to look at what's around them in their yard where they like to walk, how they walk, if they walk plugged into something, or if they actually are connecting to those trees. Um, Beautiful. So this might be the year to think a little bit differently about how you're engaging in your different activities and what you're surrounded by. 100%. I love that. Yeah, no, we have to really admire the trees this year and really connect with them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's um, move to the last part. I know you and I are going to meet on another podcast, so okay, um, there's a lot of questions it. I could ask, but we'll we'll stay yeah. focused <laughs> on 2024. Yeah. Um, so do you have a movement pattern that you like to do to energize yourself through the day? Well, my goodness, now I have to say tree pose because we were just talking about the trees, you know, like from yoga. But aside from that, <clears throat> I... It depends because there are different, um, we have in astrology, different movements and asanas for different signs. So depending on the current season we're in. So today, for example, we are in, uh, we're, well, we're in the next couple of days, we're moving into Sagittarius season. So that would be a different pose. Like for example, yoga would be like crow's pose, for example, mm -hmm. there's different signs that then help you kind of tune into that frequency um so that changes throughout the month 
but also not to sound like uh funny but it depends on what i'm wearing and what i'm doing like in the course of a day because if i like i'm wearing a a suit or if i'm wearing a jumpsuit or something i, and I can do different poses but what I, I really really love to do to help me and en get energized and to shake things up especially in, in between sessions or between readings or if i've been writing a lot i like doing star jumps <laughs> <laughs> so i love to do it because it helps with the lymphatic system. It just gets the the heart going and it gets everything just kind of shaking it all off. And I, I love to do that because then it like really gets me energized. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I have a whole sequence that I actually have worked on um, called the star. And, and then wow. you are working with um, the way the brain and the body interconnect and that movement is shoulder and hip. Um, beautiful yeah that's really interesting I now I'm a little bit older now so jumping and doing a star jump isn't my favorite activity that I would choose but yeah. I could do it uh, a little bit slower and that expansion contraction that you do get in the jump so that's really yeah. interesting yeah yeah absolutely it sounds amazing yeah I'm yeah I'm glad you can relate <laughs> yeah um, and as we were talking about the trees I was thinking about when I was introduced in Tai Chi to doing a toyu with a tree. Okay, and wow. I don't know if you've ever done that in, in any of your practice, but um, the toyu action is of um, forward and backward massaging of the foot. And as you transfer forward, you make one connection. And as you pull back, you make a second connection. And you, wow. when you stand in front of a tree, then you, you can have a conversation of the energy flow of that tree. Um, and the tree can be taking the energy from you through the feet, transforming yep. it through its branches and, and its uh, trunk, and then delivering it back over top like a shower. Yeah. Which is really interesting. People just think about sitting under a tree. Similar would be happening, just that shower of energy that comes down. Um, and then if you have that opportunity to... Um, like when you go forward in the toyu, you're pushing your hands towards the tree, then the, that can re, um, release and take that energy down through the tree and go down wow. into the ground. So we have two different ways that the direction can travel. But um, that experience, I read it in a book, somebody told it to me, and I thought, oh, I don't know about that. But then I read it in a book and went, okay, other people do this. And so I started actually doing toyus with trees and, and you've kind of find your favorite tree that you have a really right. good conversation with. Um, and it was just so empowering. So, um, so that might be, I know if you know how to do a toy, you, if you don't know how to do a toy, you on my YouTube channel at Michelle Greenwell under the Tai Chi wellness playlist, we have toy. Beautiful. We have seated versions and standing versions. So either one nice. in front of a tree would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was going to say for people today, because I didn't realize we were going to go into trees, but <laughs> um, was one of the ways that you might be able to experience everything that Eric has just shared is to go for a walk and see where your posture is at while you're walking and, and notice what your breath is doing, notice what the spine's doing, and then start to think about the power of the information that he can share with you about 2024 and see what happens to your posture and see if it's lifted up, see if it's realigned, see if something pops out that you didn't even notice. Um, maybe something with the breath or how the neck could turn. Um, and just notice how having that power of the Zodiac might really transform you. And then how much more important it might be to go check out all of that, he, all the offerings that he does have. So um, that would be, that was my original thought, but now we have the opportunity to go play with trees too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, it's been lovely to talk to you as always. Likewise. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. I, I really enjoyed you know, your energy and it felt really good. <laughs> That's beautiful. I feel the same and I'm looking forward to um, how I can incorporate what you've put together uh, for myself, but then also for the students that I work with and bringing them along. So that'll be um, wonderful. Um, Thank you. And, and then, as I said, you know, we'll be 
chatting again here in the new year and uh, exploring some more ideas for people um, around muscle response testing and what's possible with biofeedback. Um, so I'm really yes. looking forward to that conversation too. As am I. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So as we close the podcast for today, I just want to remind you that season three has been devoted to the transformational process and what happens when people reach into their authentic selves and create magic. And I think we have great potential here for 2024. <clears throat> Our season has several publications. So each month you have a time that is spent with me and some of the work that I do, but you also have the guests that I can bring in through the month. And then at the end, working with my sister, Charlene Waynes, as she shares more about compassionate living and also about the Moyle family who is being supported uh, through the tea and um, also through the actions as she asks questions of others about what do they need and what is it like in their world where they live. So I invite you to check out the different ways we've set up each month and I look forward to sharing more with you soon. So this is Be Well with Michelle Greenwell, wishing you the courage to face your own transformation for your well-being and the well-being of those around you. Have a great day. <laughs>